On average, globally, we can expect to live for 71.4 years before kicking the proverbial bucket. If you're lucky and use the time you have wisely, you might just manage to achieve some goals, fulfill a dream or two, and leave the world in a slightly better condition than you found it. Of course, just existing as a human being in the modern world uses up considerable amounts of resources and creates a hell of a lot of waste as a result. But exactly how much waste does a single person produce in their lifetime? I'm Stu, this is Debunked, where we sort the truths from the myths and the facts from the misconceptions. Let's be sensible and start at the beginning. Birth. Soon after you are brought screaming into the world, the adults around you go to considerable lengths to take care of the inherently helpless bundle of joy for which they find themselves responsible. This obviously includes protecting, teaching and loving their child, but also means dealing with far more immediate bodily concerns. By the time babies are toilet trained, usually somewhere between two and two and a half years of age, the average disposable diaper wearing tot will have gone through between 6,500 and 10,000 nappies. That's roughly equivalent to 2,000 pounds or 907 kilograms, yes, an entire US ton of dirty baby underwear over the course of two years per baby. Indeed, disposable diapers represent around 30% of all non-biodegradable waste. Even more shockingly, disposable diapers often take hundreds of years to break down. And though so-called eco-friendly alternatives to non-biodegradable diapers do exist, even biodegradable diapers will not degrade at the bottom of landfills in the absence of sunlight and air, and the amount of parents who opt for reusable cloth diapers is less than 5%. All that waste is created just to cleanly dispose of the biological matter that babies produce simply as a result of, you know, existing. Speaking of, it's a good time to look at how much biological waste we all produce. In other words, the waste products generated directly by our bodies. The most obvious examples that spring to mind are good old number ones and twos. It is estimated that over the course of a year, the average person produces roughly 133 gallons or 605 litres of urine, which works out to a lifetime total of 9,500 gallons or 43,000 litres, equivalent to around 120 bathtubs. When it comes to feces, it is believed that the average person excretes around 360 pounds or 160 kilograms of the brown stuff every year, which works out to a lifetime total of 25,700 pounds or 11,700 kilograms. That's about as heavy as two elephants, three hippos, or six giraffes, depending on which member of the animal kingdom you want to use for defecation comparison. Slightly less obvious and slightly less gross bodily fluids like tears, saliva and sweat are, unlike urine and faeces, produced constantly in order to make sure our mouths and eyes stay moist and to keep us cool. Collectively, the average person produces around 172 gallons or 782 litres of tears, saliva and sweat every year, or about 12,700 gallons or 58,000 litres in a lifetime. That's enough to fill roughly 820 beer cakes. Hmm, refreshing. Moving on to less liquidy bodily fluids, humans also produce a substance called keratin, which appears on our bodies in the form of nails and hair. Over the course of our lifetimes, the average person produces 107 inches, around 272 centimeters per nail. If we multiply that by the 20 nails that most people have, we can conclude that the average person grows roughly 178 feet or 54 meters of nails in their lifetime, equivalent in length to six and a half London buses. Hair, on the other hand, while lighter, grows much quicker and in far more individual strands. Over the course of their lifetime, the average non-bald human grows a head of hair measuring roughly 35 feet 8 inches or 10 meters 88 centimeters in length. If we multiply that by 100,000 individual strands of hair that cover the average person's head, essentially creating one long strand of hair, that one long strand of hair would be over 676 miles or 1,088 kilometers long, which is well over three times as long as the River Thames or two and a half times the length of the Grand Canyon. Possibly the least obvious biological matter that we are constantly releasing into the world is skin. We are constantly shedding dead cells and in such large amounts that in a single lifetime, the average person sheds 628 pounds or 285 kilograms of skin. That would outweigh a blue whale's heart, the heaviest on the planet. That's a lot of dead skin.
Lastly, we also have to factor in the gases that humans produce. Uh. No, we'll get to that. I'm talking about carbon dioxide we all exude into the atmosphere simply as a result of a crucial little process known as breathing. Every day, the average person exhales around 500 litres of CO2, roughly equivalent to around 2.2 pounds or 1 kilogram of mass, the same as a bag of sugar. Over the course of a lifetime, that works out to around 14.3 million litres or around 31.5 tonnes, nearly 29,000 kilograms, of carbon dioxide that is expelled into the world by each each and every one of us. Add that to the three and a half pints or two litres of farts and burps that the average person produces every day, and you alone contribute a further 232 pounds or 57,400 litres of gas over the course of your lifetime. So, with nearly 8 billion of us on this little planet, we're collectively pumping out over 3 million tonnes of the stuff each year. That's around 8% of the annual global CO2 emissions created by burning fossil fuels. So, on the face of it, it looks as though we humans are pretty major contributors to greenhouse gases as a byproduct of merely existing. But these biological waste products are a unavoidable and b part of a larger natural cycle that aren't necessarily causing any extra damage to the environment. The carbon dioxide we produce, for example, is part of a process where we convert carbohydrates from CO2 absorbing plants into energy plus water and CO2, and are not actually adding any extra carbon dioxide. In contrast, when we burn fossil fuels, CO2 that has been stored up for millions of years is instantly released, and this significantly increases the level of greenhouse gases. Whereas our biomatter will generally degrade quite easily and provide further nourishment to the natural environment, even in the form of the bodies we leave behind when we die, the same cannot be said for much of the artificial waste that we humans create. And that is where we start getting into some real problems that are sadly only getting worse. But before we go on to that, we'd like to take a moment to introduce you to NordVPN, who can keep you safe and anonymous online with double data encryption. And not only that, the amazing thing about a VPN is that it allows you to access geo-restricted content. That means accessing content that is usually only available in other countries. Recognize this message? Sorry, this content is only available to viewers in insert country name. Well, select one of NordVPN's servers in that country, and hey presto, you're watching your favorite shows. Debunked viewers can get a whopping 68% off NordVPN at only $3.71 per month. Plus, you get an additional month free to get you started. Just visit nordvpn.com forward slash debunked or use coupon code debunked and take advantage of this incredible deal. NordVPN is one of the most trusted VPNs available and comes recommended by everyone from Wired to PC Mag. They also provide you with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's nothing to lose. Right, now let's get back to the matter at hand. How much artificial waste do each of us make? According to researchers from the World Bank, the global population generates at least 3.5 million tonnes of solid waste a day, 10 times more than people did a century ago. Of course, there are more people alive today, but only around four times as many, suggesting that we are far more wasteful than our comparatively frugal ancestors. As we get older, each of us only adds to our own personal ever-growing pile of trash, and in fact, it might be the case that we are at our most wasteful when we are young adults. Yep, us pesky millennials are at it again. A study conducted in the UK in 2017 found that only 49% of people aged between 16 and 34 said they recycle as much as they can, compared to 70% of 35 to 54 year olds, 83% of 55 to 74 year olds, and 81% of those aged 75 and older. These findings mirrored the results of a 2014 poll of adults in the United States, which found that millennials were less likely to always recycle than any other age group. Unfortunately, young people aged between 18 and 24 are also significantly more likely to waste food compared to older people, which has been blamed on the transitory nature of young adulthood. Unsurprisingly, moving away from home into multi-person households, lacking in fridge and freezer space, alongside people who haven't yet learned basic food management behaviours, leads to large amounts of unnecessary waste. Shocking, I know. So what exactly are we all throwing away? and how much? The answers are perhaps both fascinating and depressing in equal 
measure. According to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, the most frequently encountered material found in the municipal solid waste landfills is paper which, in its various forms, may constitute more than 40% of a given landfill's contents. The EPA report that the average American throws away 63 pounds, or 28.5 kilograms, of newspapers and magazines every year, roughly the same weight as 90 human hearts. In a lifetime, that works out to somewhere around 4,937 pounds, or 2,240 kilograms, of newspapers and magazines, this time equivalent to a rhino. Indeed, the much-anticipated paperless society, first conceived in the 1970s, never came to pass, with our consumption of paper only increasing since the 1980s, and currently only 1% of offices are truly paperless. Not only that, the amount of electronic technological waste that we produce is increasing by as much as 5% annually, with some estimates suggesting that the worldwide production of e-waste could exceed 50 million tonnes in 2020 alone. That's 150 Empire State buildings, just in TVs, laptops, toasters, microwaves and the like in a single year. That's more than half the total of all the skyscrapers in the whole of New York City. Following paper, the second most common thing that ends up in landfills is generally food waste, consisting of all the food you didn't finish and scraped into the trash or simply didn't cook at all and left to go bad at the back of your fridge like the wasteful monsters you are. Interestingly enough, those to adhere to healthy diets rich in fruit and vegetables are actually the biggest food wasters, though we certainly can't blame the global generation of food waste entirely on health nuts. Shockingly, it is estimated that we waste more than 30% of all the food produced across the globe, enough to feed every undernourished person on Earth. When researchers at the US Department of Agriculture analyzed eight years of food data up to the year 2014, they found that Americans waste as much as 150,000 tons of food every single day, equivalent in weight to five and a half Statue of Liberties. On an individual level, this works out to about a pound of food per person per day, meaning that over the course of their lifetime, the average American wastes around 14.3 36 tons of food, which is about as heavy as two T-Rexes, or to bring it closer to home, the equivalent of nine cows. It's worth pointing out that both paper and food are biodegradable, and under the right conditions, will break down completely in as little as six weeks. However, many waste products, even those that are biodegradable, often take much longer to decompose, as they are often compacted and sheltered from the open environment. In some cases, newspapers published decades earlier that have been excavated from landfills can be found still intact and entirely readable, having been deprived of air and sunlight while buried underneath piles of garbage. Not only that, but biodegradable matter like food waste produces incredible amounts of methane as it all rots away. Indeed, food waste is responsible for as much as 11% of the greenhouse gas emissions that come from food production. Furthermore, when we waste food, we're not just wasting the actual food itself, but also the energy and water it takes to grow, harvest, transport and package it. Speaking of packaging, the next largest contributor to the amount of waste that humans produce is plastic, which, as most of us know, takes far, far longer to degrade. While plastic bags may break down in as little as 10 years in favorable conditions, plastic bottles can take around 450 years to degrade, and other plastic products can last as long as 1,000 years in a landfill. Since 1950, over 9 billion tons of plastic waste has been produced, and nowadays enough plastic is thrown away annually to encircle the earth in a monstrous ring of discarded plastic not once, not twice, not even three times, but four times over. Today, an average person living in a Western country works their way through 220 pounds or 100 kilograms of plastic each year, equivalent to throwing away 6,500 compact discs, DVDs or Blu-rays. Though this figure is obviously not equal across every country, sadly, we have to report that the United States is the world's biggest per capita producer of waste. In total, as a country, the US produces roughly half the amount of trash compared to that of India and China, despite having a population roughly nine times smaller than the pair. Obviously, plastic waste is no exception. According to the global risk consulting firm Verisk Maplecroft, the average Westerner works their way through approximately 18,400 pounds or 8,300 kilograms over the course of a lifetime. 
Ultimately, each of us will send roughly 64 tons of waste to the landfills in our lives, and even worse, as much as a whopping 91% of that is not recycled according to the United Nations. And so by the time we bite the dust, the average human being will have produced enormous amounts of waste, which adds up to a truly colossal trash pile, considering the fact that there are almost 8 billion of us scuttling around on the surface of our planet. Much of our waste sadly ends up in landfills or at the bottom of the ocean, with only a small amount of it being recycled or breaking down in a short amount of time. Now, more than ever, it is crucial that we all do our best to reduce waste and recycle cool so that future generations inherit a cleaner, less polluted Earth. Thanks for watching. Please do check out our link to NordVPN, and if you enjoyed this video, then watch Myths About the Human Body next. We'll see you next time.